here in Sydney and in Australia. We are very lucky to receive Sugunendra Tirtha Swamiji from Udupi Math. Swamiji, welcome to Sydney and Australia. I'm very glad to come to the city of Sydney and to Australia. And actually, this is the second time I'm coming to Australia, first time to Sydney city. If I may ask you, what's the purpose of your visit? The, my <coughs> purpose of the visit is the Dharma Prachara. And my Matha, Sri Puttika Matha, is established by Jagat Guru Sri Matha Acharya 750 years ago. And uh, I'm the 30th Swamiji in the lineage. And uh, I took sannyasa at the age of 10. And since that day, I'm <coughs> following the sannyasa dharma and uh, I am following the order of Jagat Guru Sri Acharya. Sri Acharya has ordered our Swamiji to <coughs> propagate the dharma everywhere. So according to that, <coughs> as, um, uh, according to the, my duty, I am traveling everywhere to propagate the dharma by discourses, puja and interactions with the devotees and camps and classes. Uh, in many ways. So this time, and since many years, uh, the devotees from Australia, they are inviting me and the time has come to this place. So we are traveling actually all over the globe. Mainly we are going to America, Canada, and nearly 20 countries I have traveled and this is the second time to Australia. One question which uh, all our uh, uh, social circle friends as well as people uh, even in the larger Australian community ask is uh, the difference between Dvaita and Advaita philosophy. If you can summarize this first. Yeah, there are three major philosophies in India. So one is the Advaita and another one is Vishishta Advaita. The third one is Dvaita. Advaita means <coughs> Uh, the difference comes only, um, the main difference comes only in the matter of moksha. So what is the final destination? In that subject, these three philosophies differ. According to Advaita, the soul will merge into God. The soul will come with, uh, one with God. It will be one with God. That is Aikya. So, According to Advaita, all are one. There is no second person. So when the soul, which is considered as separate now, when it will merge into God, it is called moksha. According to Vishishta Advaita, they differ from Advaita. They say it cannot be merged with God. The moksha means not becoming one with God. But after doing sadhana, the soul is going to be equal to God. Like God, the soul will be always in that status. So, samanata, paramam samya mupaiti. It says all the time, in the ultimate <coughs> stage, the soul will be equal to God. Our Dvaita philosophy says, there is no possibility for oneness. There is no possibility for equality. But gradation will be the permanent. The logic is, when the difference is in the root, it cannot be ruined out. When the difference it, it is uh, at present, how can it will become one or it will be eradicated. It, it is not at all possible. If the soul is God, why the soul is suffering? God should not suffer. That is why the soul is not God. It is different. According to the sadhana of the soul, it will be elevated and higher post will be attained by the soul. That is called moksha but still there is a gradation. This is Dvaita Siddhanta. This is the main difference between all these um, philosophies. Right. Um, 
Swamiji, is it correct if I say that uh, the final goal is uh, to realize God and these are different ways of realizing God? Is, uh, is that a proper way of summing it up? Yeah, in general, the um, uh, mission is same. So all Acharyas, they are trying to figure out the moksha and all Acharyas, they accept this is not the final one. This is only <coughs> uh, mateship uh, arrangement. So there should be final destination. In that way, all Acharyas' efforts are same. But when the question comes of moksha, we should accept these are three different views. And of course, is, the, is there any possibility that uh, for a common man uh, in India, for example, or for that matter anywhere in the world, uh, they would be uh, confused with uh, the so many uh, philosophies and uh, muts and religions. Is there any way that we can bring all these muts in India together and uh, come up with one single message to the people of uh, India and for that matter the whole world? Yeah, it is possible. Because these, these things are for the people for a higher level. But for the common man, we, we didn't, the common man has not reached the, that level. So anyway, our effort is to attain the moksha. And all Acharyas, they are telling, there is only way by which we can get the moksha is bhakti. If we propagate bhakti everywhere, then these differences should not bother. So what I'm telling that when the question comes for the researcher and for further higher uh, thinking, then only this should be revealed. Otherwise, we should unite the society and all astikas, they should be united. The only way by which we can do this, the bhakti. We should propagate bhakti everywhere. In India, there uh, it is a secular country. There are other religions like Islam, Buddhism, Christianity and so on. How can the spirituality in India bring all these religions together and create harmony in India, you think? Uh, it is quite natural. But only the, according to my personal observation, if political interferences are not there, then all we Muslims, Christians, Hindus, we can live together. Only political people, they are not allowing to live together. Somehow they bring and they pamper some people and they uh, curb other people. That is why they are creating the problem. Once we are <clears throat> out of their hand, then religions will always um, <clears throat> propagating the harmony of the society. One thing I am pointing out, whatever we are witnessing the unrest in India because of the communal thing, all these things have <clears throat> encouraged after the independence. Before the independence, this much of unrest was not there. But all religions were there. Everything was there. These religions are thousands of years we are following. But this situation is not from the thousands of years. Year by year it is increasing because of this political misuse. For their end, it is very, very easy to um, manipulate the sentiments. That is why now we are suffering in the name of religion. Actually, it is not like that. Swamiji, the world is of course now torn apart by mistrust, terrorism and uh, so on and so forth. Is there any way India can, through spiritual means, give lead to the world to bring that love back and uh, trust back? That is the point I am emphasizing everywhere. Actually, I am the international president for a world organization for peace. Nearly 180 countries 
are the members, the people are from 180 countries are the members. And since 15 years, I'm associating with that. And uh, we had the many international conferences and recently, the last three months back, we had the conference in Vienna, Austria, and we had the conference in Amman, Jordan during 1999, and in Kyoto, Japan, and Nairobi in Kenya, and in Madrid, Spain, and in Germany, and many places in Kazakhstan, Astana, and where we get together and we discuss how to solve the world problem. All of us, we have come to this agreement that so we should be given the freedom. Once we get given the freedom, then all these things will be solved. Because the political system is not giving more importance for the trust, mutual trust. But religious system is emphasizing the mutual trust. So once the trust is established, then we can solve all kinds of problems. So the new concept of secularism, it is harming everything. In the name of secularism, we are <coughs> touring the trust world. So that once you give the importance in our education system for the belief, faith-based programs, then trust will be re-established and we can solve many kinds of problems. Finally, Swamiji, um, uh, we people of Indian origin who have come out of uh, the country and settled in various places like United States, uh, England, Europe, and of course now here in Australia are worried that our children may lose that contact with our uh, spiritual India. Uh, how, how, what kind of advice would you give those youngsters? Yeah, before answering this question, I, w I want to give one more uh, my view yes. about the re-establishing trust in the world that India should take the lead. That is my view. Because India is morally authorized for that. If you see, India is only the one country, big country, which didn't attack any other country. India is always behind the peace. So it is having the moral right to re-establish peace in the world. For example, all other countries, they are attacking other countries. Though India was attacked, but it gave the answer, but on its own, India didn't attack any country. That means India is always stick to the peace. So Indian spiritual leaders can solve the world problems. That is why always I am emphasizing India is having that quality in the soil and we should boost that and we should encourage that and so that in spiritual field we can take the lead. That is the one point. Yes. And coming to your point, how to save our generation in outside India countries. So, <clears throat> religion is based in houses. So that the influence from the house should be more than influence from the schools. Now what happens, once they are going to the schools, they are away from our Indian culture. The mainly I am pointing out the parents. If parents are, they are stick to preserve our culture, then only we can preserve our culture. If parents, they are not particular about that, then you cannot see your children should be uh, as the Indian origin. Swamiji, thanks very much for enlightening and we are very grateful for your visit to Australia. Please come back again. We look forward to your next trip. Yeah, I'm very glad to share my views with the viewers of uh, as Indian and uh, I am very uh, uh, much uh, uh, proud to reveal that uh, we should be liberal and we should be we should reach more people that is why 17 years back 
I have taken the bold decision to cross the ocean. According to our orthodox circumstances, we, it was said that we were not supposed to cross the ocean. But uh, to see the present situation and uh, after reviewing the <coughs> scriptural things, I have taken the decision to reach all people all over the world and give the message of India to everyone. That was the main goal. I am very glad to achieve that uh, purpose with the viewers of uh, us Indian today. Swamiji, thanks very much for blessing the people of Australia.